Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Okay, brothers and sisters, you may all be seated, please, in the presence of our Lord. <coughs> okay, brothers and sisters, uh, without further ado, I would like to thank the Lord for His great and wonderful privilege to be the servant of the Lord today. Everybody knows that we are all not worthy to, to be gathered in this place because all have sinned and fallen short from the glory of God. But because of His great love and mercy and compassion, God came to our lives. That's why we are all here present today because all of us, we have been touched by the love and the goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, put your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. In our introduction, my brothers and sisters, lots of people around the world Lots of people around the world, amen, keeps on celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, it is sad to see that uh, resurrection or Easter Sunday is represented by the Easter Bunny. Amen. A lot of people, brothers and sisters, when we talk about Easter, we talk about the resurrection of the Lord, we connotate that image of a bunny in relation to the resurrection of the Lord. In fact, there is also the Easter egg. Amen. In fact, people even spend time, money, and effort to uh, to do to conduct an Easter egg hunt in celebration of the resurrection of the Lord. Why do they do this? Because they do not know the real essence of the word resurrection. Everybody, from everybody, brothers and sisters, from Easter Sunday, a lot of people, we talk about, when we talk about Easter Sunday, it only means we have to be happy or we have to be merry. But brothers and sisters, biblically, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has a deeper Meaning. Come on, put your hands and praise the Lord. There is a deeper meaning when you talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. When you talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, amen, we must be able to apply what we understand about the resurrection of the Lord, amen, to ourselves, amen, and also to ensure, my brothers and sisters, our salvation, because the Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ, is coming very, very, very soon. Come on, put your hands and put your hands and praise the Lord. Come on, let's put your hands and praise God. God is coming very, very soon. Amen. Praise God. And it is the responsibility of any Christians to know the power of resurrection. It is the obligation. It is a necessary. It is a necessity that each and every individual who claims that they are a Christian, we must understand what is behind the power of his resurrection. We must need to understand what resurrection means. Amen. Amen. In order for us to completely understand what resurrection means, my brothers and sisters. Resurrection of Christ is classified into three categories. Number one, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, and you have made alive. The Bible says we are alive and we must remain alive because Jesus Christ is the God of the living. He is not the God of the dead. And we are all chosen by the Lord to be alive and to remain alive, to enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, we, oh, wait, wait a minute, not so fast, amen. The Bible says, and we were dead in our transgression and sin. The Bible says, we were all dead before, amen. Praise God. But because of the goodness of God, Jesus Christ has resurrected our faith in Jesus Christ. 
And then furthermore, the Bible says of what? But God, who is rich in mercy, Jesus Christ is the only living God who is rich in mercy. Amen. All of us, we are all sinners. We have failed and may have made wrong choices and wrong decisions. But aren't we, aren't we glad that there is a God who is merciful, that in spite of our wickedness, in spite of our shortcomings, there is a God who is ready to forgive us of all our iniquities. Come on, let's all praise the Lord. Because of His great love with, with which He loved us. Next. And even when we were dead in our in trespasses made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Amen. The Bible says, my brothers and sisters, that we were all saved by the goodness and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not because you are good. It is not because we are charitable. It is not because you are kind to animals that God gave us a right to go to heaven. If it wasn't for the blood of Jesus Christ, we would not be saved. Come on, put your hands and praise the Lord. Furthermore, the Bible says in verse 6, And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus Christ. In order for us to understand the resurrection power of God, there must be something that has been, that must and should be resurrected in our lives. Amen. In order for us to say that God is alive in us, that means there must be something in our lives that has been resurrected from the dead. And when the Bible says, when we talk about resurrection, resurrection means resurrected from the dead because of sin. We all know, brothers and sisters, that death is defined as the cessation of life. Death is defined as the cessation of life. And when there is death, there is a separation. When we talk about death, there is a cessation and a separation of the Spirit of God from the human body. There is a separation when the Spirit of God departs from our earthly bodies, brothers and sisters. That body is declared dead. Every time there is a separation from the Spirit of God, everything that has been departed from the presence of God is declared dead. Come and put your hands and praise the Lord. And all of us, brothers and sisters, we were all separated from the Spirit of God before because of our sins, because of what you call us the original sin. All of us, brothers and sisters, we were separated from God before because of the sin that we have inherited from Adam and Eve. And this sin is what you call as the original sin. And this sin, brothers and sisters, will produce what you call a curse. And because of the sin that our forefathers have, con have, uh, uh, have committed against the Lord. Amen. God has cursed our forefathers into a life of, mis mis uh, into a life of mi uh, misery, suffering, and death. A lot of us, we are suffering. We are not enjoying our lives. God intends us to enjoy our lives. But we are not enjoying our lives. We are not enjoying our marriages. We are not enjoying our jobs. We are not enjoying our ministry. We are not enjoying our place in this world. Why? Because there is a curse. Amen. Amen. And this curse, brothers and sisters, it keeps on jumping from one generation to the next. Amen. But brothers and sisters, that is not the intention of the Lord. Amen. God does not want us to live a miserable life. In fact, the reason why God called us into this church, why that is the reason why God invited us to come and hear the voice of the Lord, is because the Word of God, the Spirit of God, will give us the power to be free, the power to praise God, the power to worship. Whoever the Spirit of God is, there is freedom, there is liberty. God does not want us to be under the bankruptcy bondage. God wants us to be free from bondage. 
bondage of depression, bondage of sickness, bondage of, uh, of loneliness, all these negativities, brothers and sisters, must not have any place in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. And that is the goodness of God. Amen. That is the mercy of God. Although we are suffering, we have a place where we can experience the goodness of God. And this is the church of God. This is the mercy of God. Every time we put our place into the sacred place, the mercy of God flows because it is the blood of Jesus that organizes this church. Have us put your hands and praise the Lord. We have been alive. We are now alive. That is why our faith must be alive. Our faith must be alive. Amen. Because we have been liberated from sin. And this sin causes so much trouble. So much curse and despair. But God wants us to be free from that curse of sin. Amen. Amen. It is because of the curse of the sin. Because of, the, because of this original sin. That has brought pain and destruction in this life. In this world that we are living in. That is why brothers and sisters. That is precisely the reason. Why Jesus Christ. Was crucified on the cross. 2015 years ago. Why? So that all of us. Will be free from the curse. Amen. Come on put your hands and praise God. We must be able to distinguish. A curse from a trial. There is a difference between a curse and a trial, my brothers and sisters. They are similar, but they are different in definition. Amen. A trial is something that even if you go through, there must be joy in your heart. Because the God is just trying to change a certain character and a certain personality in ourselves. Because we are all undergoing a process of purification. But when you say a person is under curse, no matter how good you are, no matter how, how hard working you are, you cannot seem to go up a notch higher out of this life. You cannot seem to go beyond your bankruptcy. You cannot, you, no matter how much medication you have taken, you cannot get healed. Well, there's a curse. Amen. No matter how much you try to be nice to your husband or nice to your wife, you, know, you always seem to be depressed. You always seem to not enjoy your marriage. Why? Because there's a curse. And God says, I, I came here to break that curse. Amen. And that is why all of us, we are invited by the Lord to believe. We are invited by the Lord to receive His blood. We are invited by the Lord to speak to be sanctified by His blood because His blood has the power to take away all the curse in our life so that we would have a life that is worthy of the praise of the Lord that is part of your pain and your suffering I know and I know and I know I will be able to go through this because God is on my side and I have been free by the blood of Jesus Christ I'm free Praise the Lord. Second point, my brothers and sisters. When you say that we have been resurrected by the Lord. Number two, in Psalms 115, verse 3 to 9. But our God is in heaven. Let me just remind you, brothers and sisters, that the God we serve, He is not in this place. Amen. He is not on a lowly position. He is on an elevated position. Amen. God, when you are in an elevated position, God can see those things that we cannot see. And that is why, brothers and sisters, when we raise our hands and lift our voice to the Lord, we worship and praise God and we put our trust in our praise. Why? Because we know God is on an elevated position and there are things that He can see that we cannot see. There are certain things that we cannot see because we can't seem, we can't seem to see the way. But God can see a way, even if there seems to be no way. Because God is in heaven. And He does whatever He pleases. Verse 4. And their idols are 
as silver and gold in the work of man's hands. Verse 5, and they have mouths, and they have mouths, but they cannot speak. The Bible says that there are certain, well, there are certain false worship that we must, we must change and we must be resurrected from. Amen. They have, when you worship in, to idols, they have mouths, but they cannot speak. They have eyes, but they cannot see. Verse 6, and they have ears, but they cannot hear. They have noses, but they cannot smell. Verse 7, and they have hands, but they cannot handle my problem. They cannot handle my depression. They cannot handle my financial difficulty. They have feet, but they have. They feet they have, but they do not walk. Yes, they have feet. They have illustrations or molded wood or metals of brass that they have feet, but they don't have any action, nor they mutter to their truth. Verse 8, those who make them are like them. So is everyone who trusts in them. In verse 9, O Israel, that is why the Bible says, all of us, we must trust in the living God, the living God of the Holy Bible. There is no other living God except the God of the Bible. And there is only one God. And His name is higher. His name is mighty. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Savior of your soul. He is the Savior of your finances. He is the Savior of your heart. And there is no other name and in the heavens and the earth that has the power to be saved except the name Jesus Christ. Come on, let's all put your hands and praise the Lord. Holy Israel trust in the Lord. He is our help. The Bible says, if you are in trouble, just ask God and call upon the Lord and God will answer you. Yeah. Don't put our trust on idols. Don't put your trust on, on graven images because they seem to have eyes but they will never be able to see your condition. They have ears but they cannot hear your prayer. They have mouth, they cannot give direction into, they cannot bring a, a voice of direction towards you. They have hands but they cannot reach out to your knees. They have feet but they cannot step forward into your deliverance. But my God is alive. Yeah. My God is my Savior. And I am here. Thanks be praying to all of you today. The goodness of the Lord. The mercy of God. That Jesus Christ is the one and only living and answering God. Praise the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Because every time we put our trust in Jesus Christ, He becomes our shield. Jesus becomes our shield. Yeah. And the Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. I know and I believe somebody is getting healed right now in Jesus' name. I know I can feel the Spirit of God. Somebody in this place is giving, is receiving a blessing from God because you have the guts to believe. Amen. Jesus is a blessing God. And he will bless the house of Aaron. And Jesus Christ, to God be the glory church, is the house of Aaron. This is the house. This is the house of the El Shaddai. This is the house of the living God. Praise the Lord. What am I trying to say, brothers and sisters? My point is that we, if you say that you are resurrected, God resurrected us from idol worship. Amen. Jesus has resurrected us from idol worship. And if you are worshiping the one true God, truly you are a worshiper and you have been resurrected from the grave. Come us with your hands and praise the Lord. Praise God. And if somebody is not worshiping the true Jesus Christ yet, Sad to say, they are still dead before the Lord. They are still dead. Because the Bible says, they will be like those who they worship. The Bible says in 115, they will be like those who they worship. 
if they worship a dead god and they will be uh, they will be dead like the like like the god they worship and that is why my brothers and sisters that is precisely the reason why there is a church of god why god has instituted this place because this place is for us to know the word of God and the word of God and God is God himself every time you hear the word of God you take a piece of God into your heart every time you hear the word of God you take a piece of God into your head every time you hear the voice of God you put a piece of God into your spirit because God is alive and every time you put the word of God into practice the word becomes flesh. The word becomes flesh. Amen. Amen. That is why, brothers and sisters, if you say that you are alive, your worship must be alive. Amen. Every time you raise your hands to the air and raise your voice to the Lord, we must be able to tap into the Spirit of God. Amen. Because the Bible says in John chapter 4, verse 24, God is the spirit and we have to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We cannot worship God by just singing to the Lord. We worship God by studying his word because the word of God is getting God into our system. Let us put your hands and praise the Lord. Last but not the least, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, Amen. That we have to we have to worship God. We have to serve the Lord. We have to share and be faithful to the one true God, which is Jesus Christ. There is no other God. Amen. There is only one God. Amen. And when we come and worship in a church, we have to make sure that that church, that institution is correct in its doctrinal teaching that there is only one undisputed champion that is our Savior. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Last but not the least, the Bible says in Luke chapter 15, verse 4 to 5, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lost, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder rejoicing. Do you believe, my brothers and sisters, as we sit on these sacred chairs, this is the shoulder of God. The Bible says, when he finds a lost sheep, he, that, sh that lost sheep will be placed on his shoulder. Amen. Amen. And the very seat that we are putting ourselves on is the very shoulder of God. Amen. Amen. What I mean by this, brothers and sisters, all of us, we are lost, but now we are found. Come on, sweet and hands and praise God. Amen. What am I trying to say, brothers and sisters? We can never say that you have a resurrected faith. We can never say that you have a resurrected, uh, you can never say that you are resurrected in faith if you are not grateful for what Jesus has done for you. All of us, we must be grateful. We must be grateful. The Bible says in everything we have to give thanks to the Lord. If you have a problem, you must be thankful for God. Why? Because in spite of all the pain and the agony and the troubles that you are going through, the Bible says God is faithful. He will never allow you to go through a trouble or, a, or an issue in your life that is far beyond your capacity to handle. God is a faithful God. Jesus is the faithful God. And that is why my brothers and sisters, in spite of it, brothers and sisters, we must raise our hands and praise God. Why? Because it is the Spirit of God who give us the strength to go through all the things that God wants us 
us to go through. Praise the Lord. Come and put your hands and praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We must be grateful because people are all lost. We were just found. Everybody in this place, including myself, brothers and sisters, we all go our own ways. We have our own personal agenda. We all have our different plans. We all have our dreams, our ambitions. I'm going to do this when I'm 30. I'm going to be doing this when I'm 40. I'm going to be retiring when I'm 50. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. But what happened to all these plans? All of our plans seems to not be effective. Because the Bible says his plans God's plans will always persevere. Yeah. Because God's plans is better than our human plans. Come and put your hands and praise God. Sometimes God changes your plans. Sometimes God changes your plans. I want to be happy, to be happily married when I'm 22 or 25. But how come I have to go to the nasty divorce? Why? Because there is a plan. There's a plan in your life. God wants to, God wants to divert your, 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 your ways instead of going towards your own personal ambition. God wants to divert you towards Him. Because He knows, God knows that any love that we put beyond the Lord will fail. We have to put our love to Jesus Christ first. Then everything will fall into place. Come and put your hands and praise the Lord. Amen. I have plans to in my profession. I have plans to in, I have plans in my career. Why do I have to fail? God allowed us to fail, not to hurt us. God allows us to fail. Why? Because God wants us to realize that humility is a lesson to be learned. Amen. But once we are humble before the Lord, the Bible says, all those who are humble will be exalted. Why? Because humility will bring us the glory towards the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We must be grateful. Turn to your neighbor and say, you must be grateful. We must develop that attitude of being grateful to the Lord. Every time you put anything in your mouth, we must thank the Lord. Every time you put anything on your body, we must thank the Lord. Every time you open your eyes in the morning, we have to thank the Lord first. Because if it wasn't God looking after us while we were sleeping, we would all be dead. Praise God. We have to be thankful because we were all lost. When I say that we were all lost, we have no sense of direction. We have multiple priorities. Amen. 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 My priority on Sunday is to relax. My priority on Sunday is to go on a date, is to go on a holiday, or to do this and to do that. Now how come we are here worshiping the Lord on a beautiful Sunday afternoon? Because God has changed our hearts. Yeah. And there is something that has resurrected in your spirit. That is why you have to go to church today. Come and put your hands and praise the living God. Oh, you can do better than that. Because we have been lost. But now we are found. Praise the Lord. The biggest blessing that we have ever received from the Lord is not your new car or a new new house or your new suit or your new job. It's to have a good direction in life. Yeah. Jesus has diverted your life instead of your going down. Now we're all going up. We're all going up. Praise the Lord. If it wasn't for the Lord, in fact, all of us now, we have the benefit of hindsight. You know what is hindsight? You can see, you can look over your shoulder and look over your life. You can, all look, you can look over your shoulder and look back into your life and say, Oh, that has to happen in order for this to happen. This has to happen in order for this to happen.
happen. Why? Because everything God has planned so that we would worship the Lord. That problem in the marriage was orchestrated by God. Don't blame your husband. Don't blame your wife. It is because God willed. That is why God has brought us to this place. If it wasn't for that pain, if it wasn't for that uh, misery, we would not have that intensity to search Amen. for the living God. Amen. In fact, brothers and sisters, all of us, we have testimonies. We all have testimonies how God has been good to our lives. We have to keep on resurrecting all of them. We have to resurrect what, what God has done over yourselves. Over our lives. Because God is always doing something good every day. Come on, speak your hands and praise God. We all just have to resurrect in our spirit. Isn't it that you're resurrected in your spirit? Amen. You are constantly reminding yourself that, that if it wasn't for God, I would not be here. Amen. If it wasn't for the Lord, God made a way. Amen. Even if there seems to be no way. Amen. Truly, Jesus is the way. Amen. God is why we celebrate Easter, not because of the Easter bunny. We celebrate Easter, not because of the Easter egg hunt. We praise and worship God on this special day because our God is alive. Praise the Lord. When He is alive, we have nothing to worry. When He is alive, there is no trouble bigger than the Lord. When Jesus is alive, there is no sickness that God cannot heal. When Jesus is alive, there is no pain that God cannot comfort. When Jesus is alive, there is no suffering that you cannot overcome. Because my God is alive. Who I am just go. Who I am sin as I'm gonna be Why? And that is why every time the devil tries to kill your faith, every time the devil tries to kill your worship, do not let that devil win and, and then overtake your heart. Because your God is alive. And my worship must be alive. Come on, let's put your hands and preach the Lord. Oh, you got me excited over there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We all have gone astray and done our own will. Like a child without a family, we are all homeless, hungry, and defenseless. Amen. That is our situation. Would you please turn to your neighbor and ask him or her, do you know my situation? Can you understand my situation? Everybody in this place has a situation. Amen. I don't care if you're 9 or 92. I know you got an issue. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But the Bible says, in spite of our situation, in spite of our condition, the Bible says, Jesus has adopted us into his family. Amen. Jesus has taken us in. We are all homeless children before. Amen. Have you ever seen a homeless child? Amen. Amen. In the Philippines, you don't need to go very far. Even on the highways, you can see pathetic children begging for money. Amen. Why? Because they are homeless. They have no families. They don't have the love of their mothers or their fathers or the warmth and the care of their mothers. They have to live in the streets. They have to deal with the hardship of life. They have to be tough to survive. Because it's not easy to live in the slums. If you're not smart, it's either you're going to go hungry or you're going to be dead. And that is the rule of the street. All of us, we have gone astray. We are so hungry before. We are filthy. We are dirty. And we have been toughened by the hardships of life. But because of the goodness of God, 
God saw our pathetic condition. And God has taken us in. And God has welcomed us into His family. Amen. And once we have been taken up, we were adopted children of God. The true children of God, my brothers and sisters, for those who for those who do not know, we must be grateful for our salvation because the true benefactors of salvation is not us. It's supposed to be the Israelites. But because of his mercy and his love for us, Jesus, Jesus opened the door. He has bypassed his children to welcome us. Come on, speak your hands and pray for them. You got, a, you got a Bible verse to justify you just what you just had said. The Bible says in Romans chapter 11 verse 24, if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is why, which is wild, we're all wild. Oh, you can't say amen because I know you are wild. We all have a wild sign. Oh, you can go and sit there, cross your arms and look holy and nice. But I know you got a wild side, buddy boy. I know you got a wild side there, sister baby. Yo. I know how you do wild things in the disco pub. I know how you shake those bonbons. I know you've been wild before. You can't sit there and look cute. I know you're wild. I lost my aim and board of trustees. <laughs> Silence always means this. Yeah. I must put your hands in praise the Lord. <laughs> if you are cut out of all of you, which is wild by nature, we're all wild by nature, you know. You think I'm always nice and cute? I'm the disco king, baby! I'm disco king, man! Amen! I do a showdown. You know what's a showdown? Oh, you got boobs? I got boobs too, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm a Saturday Night King, you know? Saturday Night Live. I'm alive on Saturdays. But dead on a Sunday. Because I'm so drunk and I have a headache. Amen. It's the truth, you know. But God has a way to deal with our wild side. And that is why I praise the Lord. God knows our weakness. And He knows how to convert these weaknesses into strengths. Come on, put your hands and praise the Lord. Oh, now I got to them. Hallelujah. I told you I'm coming on your street. Praise God. The Bible says that you were grafted contrary to your nature. It is, our, it is not our nature to praise the Lord. It is not my nature to wear a tie. It is not my nature to, to, to read the Bible. It is not my nature to go to church. No, 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 that's not my nature. Oh, it's not my nature to worship God. It is not my nature to, to sing praises to the Lord. No, 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 that's not my nature. That's not my thing, right, man. That's not my thing, buddy. I don't like those stuff. Never in my wildest dreams have I ever envisioned myself being a pastor. That's so true. And that is true to all of us here. We are here praising and worshiping the Lord, not because you, you have gone against your nature. Because there's something inside that has changed when the Holy Spirit has touched your heart. Yeah. Come on, put your hands and praise the Lord. Into cultivating the olive tree, how much more do these you were who were natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? The Bible says the olive tree is referred to the Israelites, they are the true children of God. Amen. What is that has to do with me? When, 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 when the world comes into an end, when everything all has to go down and close the door and close the shop, and this world is gone and destroyed, the true, the Israelites are the only ones who has the right to be saved by God. Amen. But you know what? 
God has despised His own children. He has despised His own children. Amen. And grafted, He has cut that olive branch and grafted a wild branch. Amen. It is like having a mango tree. Everybody knows the mango tree. And he decided to just cut one of those branches and put a calamansi branch there. <laughs> that calamansi branch grew in a mango tree. And that mango branch was cut off. And that is precisely the reason why Israel now is having so much trouble and difficulty. Do you know that last Saturday was a blood moon? Don't know that. Because I was so busy fiddling with my Facebook line. You don't know. Now you know. No man, even if it's a day later, at least you know. Come on, put your hands and praise the Lord. And that's besides the reason why, why God, has, God has allowed all his children when you come to Israel. When you talk about Jesus Christ, they will never believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. They will never ever believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Why? Because God purposed them to despise Jesus Christ as the Messiah and allow us to believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah Amen. so that we would have a chance to be saved. Yeah. Put your hands and praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands and praise the Lord. If you only understood what I just said, you will be jumping in joy because God has this own, his own, because of his love for us. Hindi man niya yung sarili niyang anak. Hindi man niya yung sarili niyang anak. At kinuha niya yung anak na yung, yung batang grasa. Yun ang yun yung yun 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 inampun niya. Inampun niya yung sarili niyang anak. Para Uwi niya yung batang grasa. Tayo yung mga batang grasa. At Tagalog na po ito. Alam pa ano po ang ating Panginoon. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why, brothers and sisters, we become resurrected Christians. And we become alive in faith when we are grateful for what we have. You may rest, you may celebrate Easter as much as you want, but if you are not grateful for the things that God gave you, you will never ever be alive in the faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands up. How to be grateful? Will you please turn to your brother and ask him how to be grateful? Because I'm not grateful with my wife. I'm not grateful with this job. I don't like this job. I don't like where I'm working. I don't like my marriage. I don't like my husband. I don't like her. She's getting fat. She's getting hungry. She's getting uglier. I don't like him. And I don't like my kids. Can I have another set of kids? I don't like my boss. I don't like my colleagues. And that is what we sing every day. Because we're not grateful. How do we become alive? You know how? Appreciate more. Amen. Expect less. Come on, put your hands and praise the Lord. Appreciate more. Expect less. It is our expectation that destroys our faith. But it's in our appreciation of the little things that God is pleased. Amen. If you appreciate what you have, I guarantee you, God will bless you more and more. Amen. Let me speak your hands and praise the Lord. Second point, how do we express gratefulness? The Bible says, in what we have read a while ago, 
In Psalms 113, verse 1 to 3, this is where I'm going to go to. The Bible says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Would you please turn to your neighbor and say, You must and should and always be united with Jesus Christ. Yes. We must have a good connection with Christ. Amen. An iPhone, the other day, I thought I plugged my iPhone, but when I woke up in the morning, it's as dead as nothing. Why? Because I thought I connected the plug, but it was not fully connected. That phone was completely dead. The reason why a lot of Christians are spiritually dead because you seem to be connected with Christ but you are not fully connected with Christ. That is why we cannot be charged. God cannot upload us with the energy, with the goodness, with the peace of mind, with the strength to stand in the middle of trouble. God cannot give us the courage to overcome our fears because we seem to be connected with Christ, but we are not fully connected with Christ because we are not united people of God. That's why that phone is dead. I can't make a call. I cannot receive a call. I cannot receive a message. I am completely dead away from my colleagues. I do not know what's happening in the office. Why? Because my phone is a dead. We are dead because we are not united with the Lord. We have to make a decision to connect. And when we make a connection, it has to be a fool. Please turn the neighbor and say, it must be a fool. Connection. So that you will be uploaded. How can you download things if we God can upload things on you? Amen. Come on, put your hands and pray the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We have to be united to the Lord. We have to connect. We have to push that, that button all the way in. A lot of Christians are half-hearted Christians. We are Sunday, Sunday worshipers only. My worship and my praise is restricted on Sunday alone. Where in the Bible did you learn that? There's no such thing as a Sunday Christian. I think I heard that. I think I hit a nerve there somewhere. The Bible says we are not connected. We are only connected by virtue of obligation. I feel I have a need to go to church. But I don't have to, 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 to live a holy life on a Monday. I don't need to follow uh, the instructions of the pastor on a Tuesday. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. But on Sunday, we want to instantly feel the goodness of God. We want to feel the blessing of the Lord. But we want to be alive on Sunday. But on Mondays, on Saturdays, we're dead. How can you expect God to give you life on, 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 uh, on one day if you've been dead and frigid for seven or six days? How can you cannot? It is completely impossible. It is a vain practice of religion to pretend to worship God on a Sunday but we're all dead on the weekdays. The Bible says in order for us to be resurrected when God resurrects your faith on a Sunday it is our job to remain alive on a Monday. Alive on a Tuesday. Alive on a Wednesday. Alive all the way to the next Sunday. Why? Because we have to be alive. We have to be alert. We have to be in 
enthusiast. We have to be alive. We have to unite ourselves with the Lord. It is our job. It is our obligation to search for the source of power. Otherwise, that phone is completely useless. I don't care if, that, if that's iPhone 6 or iPhone 10. Even if you have the fanciest phone in this world, that phone is completely useless if that has no power. Amen. And we are the same. We have no power against the devil. We have no power against temptation. We have no power to get what we have, what we need to get in our lives. We have no power to prosper. We have no power to reclaim what the devil stole. We have no power to be strong in the Lord. Because we are not connected to the Lord. We are not united. How do we become united in the Lord? We start with the church. Amen. Everything begins in this place. Amen. I'm going to say it out again because I haven't heard this side saying amen. The Bible says everything begins in this place of worship. Amen. The Bible says all your dreams and goals begins in this place. Amen. Come on, let's put your hands in place. Hello. It begins in this place. But it's not enough that this begins here. It has to continue. Amen. It has to continue to be alive. Amen. 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 You know, just recently, I just purchased a power bank. Joke you then. And I waited for two months for that. <laughs> anyway, it finally came. Because my wife bought from Funa. So, to cut the long story short, sometimes our phone runs out of energy. Yes? But if you have a phone bank, anywhere, anytime, any place, you can get recharged. Amen. Do you know that any given time, you can pray to God and God will recharge you? I'm worried because of this temptation. Lord, help me, Lord. You don't, remove, you don't realize you're plugging yourself into a power bank. Amen. Amen. That zero will become a one, and then that one will become a ten, and then that ten will become a twenty, and then a thirty, and eventually, even if it's just less than 10%, you can start making that call. Because when you call upon the name of the Lord, anywhere, anytime, Jesus is our present help in times of need. Come on, let's all stand up and praise God. Come on, let's all worship the Lord. Hallelujah, praise God. Amen. Come on, let's all sing praises to the Lord. Are you ready?